I read the article from the actual news, and it said they, the dog got a scent, a scent that they, uh, from an article of clothing or something, and then they tracked all the way here, like several times. Well, here's, here's, here's your better one. There was a the dispatcher. The, the call got released from the dispatchers to the deputies and the responding units. In that uh, release of information, you can clearly hear the dispatcher and the cops all say, the dog's got a sentence over here in this pond. Okay. Jim Rogers, the Sumner County Sheriff's Office just announced a new search is underway for the teenager who disappeared in late February. Allie Lynch has been following this story for us all morning. Welcome back to the channel, everybody, where we cover true crime mystery to the missing. Sebastian Rogers is a 15-year-old autistic teenager who lives in Hendersonville, Tennessee. He was last seen Sunday night on February 25th by his mother, Katie Proudfoot. The next morning on the 26th, his mother went to wake Rogers up and get him ready for school, but Rogers was nowhere to be seen. Sebastian Rogers was allegedly wearing a black sweatshirt, black sweatpants, his glasses, and his keychain flashlight. They also claim that all of his shoes were accounted for, which means he is most likely barefoot. His case has garnered a lot of media attention, which has helped get his tragic story out to the masses. There has been numerous searches for Sebastian Rogers, including a landfill search in the beginning to groundwater and air searches. Included in those searches were handlers with scent dogs that seem to have gotten a hit that led them to a retention pond nearby but those so-called hits have been a topic of debate. Some reports claim that those were positive hits, while others, including law enforcement, saying those hits were false positives. Recently, a YouTube channel called Narc Divers recently spoke with Chris Proudfoot, the stepfather of Seth Rogers. He claimed that the scent dogs did get a hit and tracked the scent to an area that is under construction with a retention pond. So in this video, I enhanced part of the call so you can hear Chris better and what he says. And I show on the map the approximate path that he describes. Here's your better one. There was a the dispatcher. The, the call got released from the dispatchers to the deputies and the responding units. In that uh, release of information, you can clearly hear the dispatcher and the cops all say, Okay. Yeah, and that's what. And that's that's what everybody kept saying, and I'm like, there's got to be. So, if you're in that subdivision, yeah, I'm directly. The next subdivision over to the left is our subdivision. Okay. Do you know how like how much they actually drained? They drained the whole thing. It's okay. So initially when it, when, it, when they went over to look at it, it was only knee deep. Uh, from the picture that you showed me, there's a lot of new runoff. Yeah, that's what from I was where they're cutting. Yeah. Trying to figure out. So I was like, I don't know how shallow it was before or after. Yeah. I'm, I'm five foot nine, and it was knee deep. Okay. <laughs> so and they even drained it and still walked it. Okay, so they actually walked it. I didn't know that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, and that is actually information that was told to me by law enforcement. Yeah, so they actually... Because I went on a... Me and law enforcement, they could put me in a vehicle. Right. Drove back around and showed, showed me a bunch of stuff. I'm the only one that they've done that. Okay. So I, I can actually give you a little bit more information than what everybody's out there running their mouth. Yeah. No, I'm not going public with it. No. But I'm, then, so to work backwards from the pond, okay, if you were to walk from the pond, go straight up into the construction site, you'll see where they cut the road and it turns left. If you walk that all the way back, run to our subdivision. Okay. If you go down Kelly, all the way down to Stafford, and walk 
down towards Stafford and toward our house. From our house, I'm gonna, if you're looking at my house, I'm going to tell you where the dog scent went. They started on the front porch. Okay. Because off the front porch, the dogs cut to the right. They go all the way down the side of the house, along the fence. So they went to the back side, or the back, that, that, right. to the north. If you're, looking, if you're looking, if you're looking at my house, okay. it's going to be the right hand side. The dog goes all the way down the fence. The dog comes all the way back up into the yard, and then it cuts diagonally to the house next door to us through their back yard. And that, and that is the direction which the dogs take off. Now after that, that's where they get over to the main road, go up Kellen, and head over to uh, the other subdivision. Okay. Day one, there was five dogs. On day one, the five dogs did that. Out of the eight days, three, three different dogs from three different groups um, went to that same area in that same set. On day one, two of those dogs did the same path. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that was the Bloodhound and the Blue Team. That's, that's why I was like, well, there we go, folks. That's why I said, out of all the dogs, there was at least three consistent kids that knew that. that right. Path. And they went to the strongest. And there was a couple dogs, like one dog uh, went over to Long Hole Pike and got there and he lost his head. Try to figure this out and keep on. So this phone call is kind of interesting as Chris Proudfoot claims that there was multiple dogs that did get a scent trail led from the front yard diagonally to onto Kellen Road, led up north then cut over into the construction site and hit around the retention pond or lost the scent. Um, and then he also claims that there was another dog that went south of Kellen onto Long Hollow Pike and then from there lost his scent. Which is interesting because down further south at Long Hollow Pike there is a giant wooded area. Keep in mind that we were told this was a false positive so it does beg the question what is the real truth? The link to Narc Diver's video is in the description. Rogers has now been missing well over a month and there has been no concrete leads. Here is his flyer. Please share his story. Please share your thoughts in the comments below and thank you so much for watching.